Hello, comrade. I watch the YouTubes and I recognize a slight pattern. <laughs> There's uh, someone who especially does it. Um, he proclaims to make the perfect season or make a fast start in realistic mode with less problems and this and that. But especially he tries to make complex transport work and he fails several times. And this must stop now. <laughs> so, Dennis, I said to myself, Walls to walls, let's fix it. So here we are, and uh, let's make no drama about it. I recognized, uh, I recorded this episode for a friend of mine, and um, the topic is complex transport and how to make the metro work and other. Or transport systems. What you see here is a city which is built around for 10,000 workers, should have around 12,000 inhabitants at the moment. And there's nothing which you usually build in the city, like a shopping center or a school or kindergartens are there, and the police station you see there. These are in the center of the city, but nothing else. So, housing, kindergartens, and police. This is a model city I built with him in duration of several hours. Uh, at great fun, it was a nice evening. And I want to share it with you. Because um, making complex uh, systems work is quite hard. If you don't stick to some certain rules and if you try to be smarter than the game, which is always a bad idea. Yeah. This video will be divided into a part where I show how the city is built and uh, last part where I uh, explain how the system works. If you don't want to see the um, time lapses, I will comment them, then uh, you are free to skip to the last part. Uh, I will explain everything which is needed in the end of the video. If you want to see the time lapses, join me. The time lapses are not recording to make time lapses, the time lapses are cuts from the from the gameplay where I explain also to my friend how and why I did it. So. It's not a super, super uh, nice time lapses to watch. Um, and I think I wouldn't do it only for the time lapse sake because um, you need to move your camera a little bit different. So please be aware of that. Um, and let's get into it. So like Every good city, it should start on a, a plain map. <laughs> this is the height and hills map from the default game. I start with uh, no money and uh, just want to build a city that works. So the citizen reaction is great. Everything else is not so super important. Uh, the center is the metro station, which you see, see there. Where everything is around it. The city is planned for 10,000 workers, which amounts to maybe 15,000 people tops. Mm. So I need quite a lot of these houses. Came along to 40 at the end. And uh, now I will lay out the city and uh, see where the maximum range of my houses are in this direction. Building the first housing block, so to speak. And uh, just measuring it out and making it work. So the important thing is that the metro station is the beyond be all and all of the city every house needs to reach the metro station because there's no shopping center or something else and if people got no food they are quite annoyed with you and go away from you so don't do it yeah this is the um, layout of the first housing block it's a little bit packed but also um, takes the design cues of a real Soviet city uh, where you have greenery in the middle and have some uh, parks or something um, in this in this uh, place kindergarten oh there was one house uh, which I didn't want to build um, came out on auto build there are some inhabitants which really will have a bad time in the next few couple of minutes but hey life's hard yeah so you see now the first block and as I said, um, I have recorded this 
playthrough or a startup for a friend and um, haven't paid attention so much about uh, making the camera work for any time lapses. And usually you need to move the camera quite a little bit less and I like to move my camera so I always check um, what are the what are the um, <laughs> where the people can move to and where they can go um, yeah so there's the um, second you can say the second block is uh, there was uh, quite shaped and now the third one mm. I think of them as like uh, quadrants, so you have uh, that's the third quadrant um, every side of the metro station. These houses have connections to the um, to the road, but they are not necessary, so I will not do them everywhere. And also, uh, you can pack the houses more tight if you don't provide road access. Every house, um, these are the vanilla houses, the whole setup is vanilla, so you can reproduce it and you can use your favorite mods if you want to, no problem. Um, make your life probably easier than uh, if auto and you go vanilla, you can go with bigger houses. I like the low risers because it's a little bit more Soviet. <laughs> At least uh, it feels for me a little bit more Soviet with the low risers. Um, and if you look at some pictures, uh, how the uh, cities are built, they are usually built with the low rises and more or less with the idea of the micro districts. So the need of a shopping center and everything in the vicinity is a good idea of the developer. Um, it reflects the reality of Soviet planning. They want to make something which uh, where people live together and work together and you never need to leave your district, so to speak, say so a micro district. You have everything, schooling and shopping and cinema and hospital. Now we break with this um, design pattern of a city. The city is, like I said, completely uh, relies on uh, public transportation. The first one is the bespoken metro. It will rely on uh, heavily on buses. I also will build an overground metro. And um, like I said, one of the most important things is to keep it quite simple. So don't make uh, lines where you collect people and transfer them. The idea of transferring people is uh, horrible. You only need uh, you lose time. This is a loop to uh, turn around the metro and <laughs> uh, a tunnel for the passengers, which is always a uh, great fun to place these tunnels out of the metro station. Um, <laughs> if you have built some metro stations, you most likely have experience with it. You can play around if you go up and down with your metro line or the tunnel line um, and try to not collide them to each other. Uh, I can go with the end station or this turnaround loop. Um, doesn't matter at all. If you have one end station, it's okay. You can have two end stations. It's simply a choice of uh, what you like or what you want. Um, if I have no end station here, I can make the turnaround loop and um, I combine it with the footpath underground. So this is a little footpath district um, where the people go through the undergrounds to the metro. It's always limiting if you start um, to um, yeah, lock yourself out because of the houses. So the town is nearly finished. These are all the things I need. Um, and uh, paid attention to have enough kindergartens everywhere, have good connectivity from everywhere to everywhere, which is important um, because we will stretch the time of our people. If you don't have everything in walking distance, uh, you need to be fast. And here we are. So we are going to uh, create the next one of our <laughs> grand plan. And this is the um, shopping center. So. We go out of the underground and um, build the underground station, go up with the metro rails. At some point, every metro needs to be overground and have the typical setup, which is uh, a depot. And if you want, uh, if you are in realistic mode or something, 
you need also a construction office and I would suggest to construct uh, set the construction office right to the entrance of the of your metro and have one side connected to the metro and the other side to your usual train line. Yeah. Um, then your life will not be hell. <laughs> Otherwise, it will be as K Cheap. He has a good amount of experience. You can follow him uh, how he fights with the metro, but in the end he wins like it should be. Yeah. So um, this is the central shopping district. Uh, the metro is there because it's a mass, mass transport and uh, we will see at the end that we need a mass transport. Um, 10,000 people is no joke, so uh, you really need to deal with them. And again, the fun with the footpaths <laughs> underground, but I managed. Um, starting with the shopping center, everything else needs to be in the vicinity, so they can drive to the doctor. This one is changed, I think. In the olden days, they wouldn't drive to the doctor, but they will drive. And um, from the shopping center, they want to have their other amenities, like, for example, sports or culture. So this won't be the little downtown area um, where I provide the culture and sports. The, what uh, I really will refer to it after that also, which is quite important, the metro only does the passengers. They, it does not the workers. The workers came in separately, which is really, really important. Um, if you start to mix up your stations in this scenario, you will overfill your stations and your people will get no service. And if you give them no service, there will be no happy people and will go away. Yeah. So this is the rough outline of the shopping district. Um, I will uh, connect a bus station at the end and have some buses for the workers. Ah, the pub. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes uh, these things fight you, but I'm a little bit stubborn. So in you go. Next one at the other end. Yeah. Okay. And the next one, please. The next one is the education sector. Here's a big bus station. This district or this quarter of the city where you see now uh, will be the quarter for the educated people. Only the educated people, only I will educate these people in this quarter. And uh, I will know where they live so I can pull out educated workers. Uh, <laughs> try to not say everything two times. Um, but you need to uh, have it simple and uh, you need to know where you get your workers from. It's simply that. I built a little roundabout here for the buses. And uh, this station is uh, for the workers, for the educated and uh, not educated. Uh, you see how it pulls out from one and a half quarters, so the quarter right in front and a little bit on the right. I will restrict the walking distance of this station a little bit. I don't want everyone to go there. This is what you have to manage if you uh, build this approach. So you have to manage where your people go and uh, how to balance this. The game usually does a really good job with it automatically. If you take it yourself, you make it yourself. What you see now is I'm building the bus stations for the um, children. These are only children. I have four bus stations for only children buses and I can again um, say, okay, these bus stations on the outer edge only um, deliver children for the basic education. They will not uh, deliver my students. Uh, the students only in the one quarter, which I bespoke earlier. So, yeah, and this is uh, where we stop this one. I will uh, set up the school buses and at the later stage I will explain how they work and what they do and so on and so forth. Yep. Filling around a little bit with the setup. Ah, I want to have a one-way road without making a one-way road. So I place this road signs and um, the idea is that the buses shouldn't cross each other on the line. So they ca ca come out at the right side in <laughs> the subject. Yeah, right side in and uh, again out and they will not cross each other. They will go in and out, uh, take a turn because um, colliding buses always uh, will hurt and 
this station will be quite busy. We'll have all the footpaths. And the next one, please. This is the working area, so I will pull out some workers. Uh, the people are usually unhappy if you don't uh, give them something to do. So they get something to do. The metro is for the passengers. This central station will be for workers. One of the highest um, capacity which you can have with roads is the tram, so you build one. Another big plus of the tram is um, in the winter it doesn't get stuck by snow and you uh, have generally better service with the tram. Yeah, you simply pull out the tram line, make again a turning circus. Circus? <laughs> Circuit? Um, yeah. And uh, by the tram, I cannot say, okay, you go collision free in this circuit, which is a little bit annoying. Uh, there are modded tram stations which are only one sided, so you can change the direction of the flow, maybe, hopefully. <laughs> Just try it. Yeah. And you see uh, at again, end station at the depot. Uh, we came to the last part. This is the section where I educate my older people, which means radio and TV. Some call it propaganda, which is heresy. I uh, made the city um, make, try to make, uh, keep the main line, main road clear of uh, footpath traffic. So I make an underground or overpass. There are some under and overpasses. This one is also a high capacity um, station. So the Metro Overground Station has a really high capacity. It's again for workers. It will pull out the workers of these quadrants of the city. So the one under the educated quadrant and the one which also provide the workers for the steelworks, which you've seen in the one before. Uh, I need a lot of people for the TV station, the radio station, and there will also be a little bit of crime and justice here and uh, Secret police. The overground station I quite like. Um, the only thing which is missing in my mind is the overground uh, end station. So you don't need to go down, but I yeah, can't have everything, I guess. Mm -hmm. If you pay attention from what side you are pulling out your uh, railroads, uh, the, uh, the pillars will be the same. Um, if you don't pay attention, they can differ. Uh, again, here with the turning loop and uh, never signal these ones. Um, everything is managed uh, by the end station for the metro tracks. Yeah. Make a little uh, studio tour around the radio station. Make it a little bit more angular, maybe. Yeah. Okay. The nice thing is really you are a little bit more flexible with the station. It's a drive through station, other than this stupid bus station here. Um, so you can connect it quite nicely. And I'm quite pleased with this, how it came out. So uh, we go here and there. And um, what also what is missing is the secret police and the uh, courthouse. The prison will be where the uh, steelworks are, which I can show you uh, in a moment. And um, one of the really critical things for the prison is never have them without people. So uh, you need really high, high, hmm? what it's called, high cycle, high, no, missing words. Okay, so let's go back to the uh, main thing. <laughs> and uh, see you in the game again. So back we are. Now the city frequency was the word. So <laughs> if you don't want to have escapes, you need a high frequency in prison. Okay. So let's see how this whole contraption here works. This is, like I said, a city for um, around 10K of workers. Um, so we'll come to... Um, 12 to 15,000 citizens, maybe. Um, the settings of this map, are, um, I paid attention of uh, the mechanics and not so much of everything around it. It should be a demonstration of how to make public transport work and not everything else. So uh, I have energy management non-existent. I have water management disabled, night management disabled. Seasons are disabled. 
uh, fires are disabled because you should know how to deal with such things if you plan to make a complex rail system or public uh, transport system work uh, i don't need to uh, tell you or show you how this one is implemented vehicle availability i start from 1970 um, this is because i want to show you the metro pollution is enabled the education system is complex crime and system is in crime and justice is enabled because i think these two uh, you need to sep if you want to separate them you need to pull in the workforce which is uh, a complication and which is directly related to the public transport system mm, traffic simulation is complex but not our biggest problem realistic mode is disabled uh, i built this one in a, in a really short time um, realistic mode would not help in any way so with hard citizen reactions the happiness is by 90 percent um, which if you try to uh, play on hard citizens you know what this means um, the uh, propagandization is on the rise alcoholism is no problem um, 26 percent uh, the people are happy and uh, also live good the, yeah, the <laughs> The health is so-so, but um, it's okay, the grand thing. Uh, unemployment is a little bit high. That's, uh, this is because I can, for example, hear uh, these people have no good access to the, to the stations, but I will come to it. Um, so I can push down the unemployment, the happiness would go even higher. Yeah, these are the, uh, the, the stats of the city. Everyone here is educated. The unemployment is not because of uneducated citizens. Everyone I want uh, gets a, a university degree. Yeah, so let's... <laughs> it's without further ado. <laughs> let's see how this thing works. So, the most important thing is the metro station here in the center. And it's quite well um, frequented. And the metro station is there for the passengers, for people who are seeking for food in primary and um, a doctor and everything else which comes after food. So after food and doctor there will come uh, amenities, culture and sport. And this one pulls in regularly, see how many people are going there. Let's see. So this has really a good amount of flow here. Yeah. And uh, it needs to be, because you cannot leave your people waiting here. It's very critical that you uh, take everyone in and have a good frequency to pull them out. And they drive here to the uh, usually the downtown area and go out here out and uh, go into the hospital and into one of these both shopping centers. They behave quite funny so if one train comes in it uh, all the people ran to the empty shopping center which you see here have i stopped it yeah um, all the people ran to the emptiest shopping center and overflow it because the train the amount of people who are in the train are so big and uh, they, it gets us down and the next one gets overfilled so if you plan such a thing keep in mind that you need a really big shopping centers and uh, enormous because they will come in waves like the russians in sweden um yeah so um it's better to have one shopping center i think which can take like 600 people and not two shopping centers because it's a little bit funny but they manage after they went to shopping like here comes the horde um they go here into the rest of the downtown area so have a little bit of culture have a little bit of sports they love this one uh, at the moment not so much but you see <laughs> how they want their attractions um, attractions i think are quite random and maybe they seek attractions when they can't pray um, this one is okay at the moment nobody's here this is the problem you have only two working places uh, workers come in here uh, through buses from the from the city so this is the pickup point for my workers mostly it's normal workers some uh, university educated and here comes the first problem so if you want to supply this whole thing with workers and you need some university educated like here for the um, hospital which is critical don't let the hospital overflow 
you need to take care of this one. Usually the game does it and it does a reasonably good job to take care of the hospital. If you, But if you rely on public transport, you need to keep in mind that you are now in charge of managing this one. This is what I mean by uh, the KISS, KISS principle, keep it stupid simple, which means this one only does passengers, nothing else. And this one only does the workers, nothing else. And this one only does the, uh, the school children and nothing else. And I can scale every one of these independently. So if I need more workers, I buy a bigger bus or buy more buses. If, I, if the frequency here is too low that uh, every, everything goes pitong, I simply need a more buses or a bigger bus, scale it up, or even build a tram system, which is also a good idea if you are in the winter, uh, because um, this whole system can get into problems if the snow falls. Yeah, um, and uh, to the hospital, I also have a second bus line which provides some doctors, uh, so I always have these ones here some of them <laughs> and uh, the educated people come from this part of the city so this downtown area people go there have every immunities they want and are happy and then they can go to work and uh, this is the second big bus stations for people and here i pull mainly i pull uh, some some uh, workers but mainly i pull here educated workers to uh, be sure that my education district and this district has enough educated workers. I need to have a reliable source of educated workers. Um, the same principle goes here. So if I want to have more educated workers in this bus line, for example, I add another bus or a bigger bus, or if I determine that here are two low educated workers, I need more buses or a bigger bus. The, the yellow buses are all school buses, which you see. Um, and they come bus by bus. Um, and the next big thing is, apart from balancing, which the game does a reasonably good job, you have a lot of traffic, additional traffic, which you also need to manage. Um, in make, you see like this one here, they don't uh, collide with each other. They simply go around and around and around. They don't stop, they can go. Then they go here to the uh, station to space each other out. And stations are very important. Don't use line spacing because with line spacing, they go slower. And uh, in the end station, if you have activated uh, energy management, they will refuel, which is also a great plus. And here they go also, they go a right turn and they go a right turn to the end station and then they collide. But um, yeah, if I would have this set up at the other side, they will collide all the time. Mm, small things, but um, many small things go into this planning of this thing here. So don't make your life more complicated than it really need to be. Um, I spoke about uh, educated people and that I take care of where they live and how they live. So if we go here and search for the education level of our people. Do we have this one here? No, 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 no. We surely have, but they all look the same. So, yeah. This one should do it. No, this one shouldn't do it. Yeah. Ah, they are all away, <laughs> up and away. They are not sitting at home. Okay. Mm. Okay. So you <laughs> have to believe me, brother. Um, this bus station here, this covers this quadrant of the town. And this is where the highly educated people live. And the upper right quadrant of the town also I allow to have some uh, regular workers here at the bus station. I could block it if I put in here uh, no uh, footpath sign. Uh, but I'm okay with this. If, if I want more educated people and less workers here at the bus station, then I need to block this off because the most important thing why I said separate your bus stations is if they overflow, they deny service for your people you need and have, for example, waking, waiting your passengers and uh, your system will collapse. It's a very delicate thing. So they will go here. This district is where my um, highly skilled people live. So here, for example, we have 65, 
Here we have 170. In this one we have uh, 130. And I only allow um, that uh, highly skilled people move in here and the children of these people stay in here. So if I, this bus station here, um, the bus line pulls out the children, also educates them to a higher level of education, which is this one. So um, here I allow uh, the, <laughs> the prosecution of higher studies, uh, which is done here. Yeah. And it's working fine. The schools also work fine. They are balanced a little bit like the shopping center. So one overflows, they go to the other one and so on and so forth. Um, yeah. So here I have the educated people. And this is really important. You need to manage this. Because you need a steady flow of educated people for your things which need educated people. Like for example also the TV station, the radio station and the... Um, no, the six police don't, but the uh, court better have some educated people. Yeah. So uh, you need a stable source of educated people the same way as you need a stable source of workers. So the educated people come from here to there and the workers come from this station for the TV station. They come from this station with the overground metro to here. The overground metro can uh, move way more people than than most of the other systems. Uh, the other which is superior is the train system because it drives faster. But for those short distances we have here the hops, it will not drive faster. Mm. The people could go from here if they leave it to this one. Uh, so I placed a sign here so they don't will work because, you know, would be de uh, defeat our purpose which we have here. So here's no walking area. Yeah. The other thing is the tram system, which is also a quite, uh, quite high, high volume thing because you can uh, couple together two trams or even three sometimes, depends <laughs> on the length, um, and they will happily toodle along. They are not disturbed by snow or anything else. I try to keep it always clean here, so no other traffic. And because I have a tram system with a high frequency, I can allow afford to have a prison here, which is always filled, which is quite important. If your prison runs out because of snow or something, uh, have too low frequency, your people will run away. And nobody ran away here up to now. This one feeds the, the prison and these uh, three steel mills, so the people have something to do. You see, I have around 170 people here. Now it's a little bit above 200. So let's say one and a half steel mills were fed here through the system. Mm, you can scale it up or down, like I said, like you want. So for example, if I determine I need more working places, I would uh, place such a big system like here. And place it here and allow my workers to go here and pull out workers from here. Because these ones are, uh, have uh, the tram station to go and nowhere else. If the tram station is full, they will uh, balance themselves out also here. Yeah. And that's it. The city, like I said, is working. The 90% <laughs> happiness, 91% here we are, is um, quite okay -ish on hardest settings, I would say. Mm. Would I build such a, ta uh, such a town layout? Mm, I don't think so. Um, I like really if you have reliable systems and not um, systems where you have a high demand of managing. So if you uh, manage, if you need to, you need to balance the city. Um, usually the game does it for you. So for example, that here are enough educated people and here are enough. And also at the same time here are enough and there are enough. This happens automatically if you have these buildings in the city. If you have them outside, you need to take care and you need to know how to manage this one, how to deal with the traffic which is provided by the buses or have other means of transportation which are reliable even in the winter and uh, are always staffed like the prison, for example. It makes a lot of problems, uh, but maybe it's fun for you. It's totally fine. Um, yeah. It's fun always to do something different. I think in the game it opens opportunities. And why do people fail? It's quite interesting. I think um, 
one, you need to know what your people do. So if you try to separate, for example, um, food and rest of the amenities, it will not work. It simply will fail because you will not make your people happy. Um, the people have only uh, uh, the people will only have a limited amount of time where they want to fulfill their uh, needs. And if you have only a shopping center and have, uh, for example, the immunity somewhere else, the whole system will collapse because they will not reach it and they will be um, confused. The other thing is, I only have point-to-point -point, uh, situations here. I only have uh, lines where they go from top point to point. For example, the, uh, the whole student situation here. These are all point-to-point -point lines. This is not one big bus line which goes to here and goes to here and loads them in and then, uh, and then goes to here. No, these are all separate lines. So I can scale them. I uh, see if the frequency is enough. Is everyone educated who is working there or not? And I can scale every one of these points. If I have a big line, which maybe in other games is uh, usual, so I have a big line driving around, going there, it will not work in this game. I have point-to-point -point lines. The system is critical enough as it is here. So um, have point-to-point -point lines and be uh, as efficient as you can be to uh, deliver your people. So a point-to-point -point line here, a point-to-point -point line to the work, a point-to-point -point line here, to uh, my education district here, that's very important. If you don't do this, uh, you will run into uncontrollable situations because you have, for example, too many workers and too little passengers or the other way around. Um, yeah. The other thing is scaling. So here you see an enormous influx of people and they don't wait too long. So every one of these uh, trams is quite full but not too full. So uh, here you have 460 people with a capacity of 500, which is uh, quite good. And everyone gets loaded up this way. So uh, if you have waiting people or people you cannot give service to, this one will spiral down and will make your uh, life not so nice. <laughs> so the point to point line, I can scale it up. I can put another uh, tram or metro into it if I want to. I could even switch out to collect my passengers here and drive them by the bus. So it's adaptable and scalable, but I think with this amount of city here around this metro station for the passengers, this is the bottom line. If you want to have more passengers, you need uh, more city around one metro station. I think um, you need another metro station. Um, this is really the biggest one you can do with one metro. Yeah. but. Um, it's a good size city. It's um, I like my cities more on the smaller side, so let's say seven, eight thousand people. Um, but if you have a bigger project, you can build a city like this. It's no problem. Yeah. So to re recap, um, keep it simple. Have point-to-point -point lines. Specialize your lines. Um, know where your workers are. Know what your passengers are. Know what your passengers need. Um, have a stable stable frequency of passengers which is independent of the weather or the traffic like these ones for example here so uh, so they don't run away and everything you do uh, you need to know the game a little bit better than if you start to set up a simple city simple cities also can collapse um, <coughs> because of crime or whatever have no water have no switch you have to crack this systems all down to make this one work and it's uh, like I said, um, wouldn't recommend for everyone. <laughs> um, if you want to have fun, uh, and here's how it goes. So, hope you enjoyed it. Bye, bye.